Hello and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. I'm Twisted Logic, and this is Basement Graves and Beers, the tutorial fortress. In the last episode, I was digging out this area for a silk farm. I thought I just saw a cave spider here. Oh yeah, here. Cave spider already started spawning here. Now this is a safe environment. Um, this cave is not attached to the um, silk farm that we're digging down here, but we already have some cave spiders spawning. So if we dig a large enough area and get enough of the cave spiders to spawn, we're going to have a safe area for spider webs and silk collection. If you enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. I still have a large force of um, undead on the surface of the map. I did trap some in our catch and release trap and I believe that some are trapped in the cavern. So I'm going to open up this cavern um, door again so that way hopefully more of the undead forces investigate that area and we split their forces even more. But I think that right now, since there's so much work going on in the fortress, I'm going to... Oh great, so the, the door's open now. So I'm going to just pause the recording until something happens. I did add some more um, walls and floors to be constructed in this area, and I canceled all of the construction on the top layer because the doors were coming up to the top layer to construct and they were being shot out with arrows because it seems like the undead army is unable to climb. The goblin forces, if this was a goblin attack, they would be all over this structure right here and, um, and I wouldn't be able to do this construction because the goblins will climb. So I'm gonna just uh, let the game run until something happens. So P for a stockpile, and then S for stone, and I'm going to put it right there. And the settings of this are going to be play only. Because I noticed that in my trade depot here, I have these three red uh, icons here. And if I click it a few times, it's uh, fire clay and sandy clay and clay loom. So I want them to have a place to bring that so my trade depot doesn't get uh, filled up. Oh great, so it looks like looks like all of these undead um, creatures are going down into the caves here. So maybe I'll wait for a couple more. It's not all of them, but it's like half of the force maybe. I'll give it a couple more minutes and then um, I will flip the lever and close them off. I was sending some skirmishes out to fight with them, however we got overwhelmed pretty quickly. If I can split the forces enough, then I can send more skirmishes out, but if not, then um, I'll just see uh, once I close this off how many are still left on the surface. But if there's too many, then uh, I'll just have to wait them out. And I'm going to just smooth stone my um, silk farm here so I can see that... Uh, so I could see it a little bit better.
Oh, okay, so down here we still have a decent amount. Uh, there's one or two over in this area by the cave, and then up to the north here there's at least three of them. Four. in over here a little bit better. Four more up here. So the forces are split, but there's still a... I mean, this gang down here would be difficult to tackle. Um, the ones to the north, not so much. Those ones are... My squad should be able to fight them, but... Uh... right there. So what is the G? So, um, a lot of mining going on, but not a lot of miners, and I have all this copper, so I'm going to go over to this, um, forge right here. Oh, I see what's going on. We're out of, um, we're out of wood, so we're out of coal. I was going to tell him to make, uh... I was going to go over to this copper pick. I'll still do it. I'll go to the workflow of this and um, shift R to change the range of this. And I'll just make uh, 15 to 35 copper picks. But um, since we're out of wood, we can't create more coal and we have no fuel for the forge. I think that... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Dwarf Therapist off-camera and tell all of the tell all of the builders the super the super labor builder I'm going to add mining to the super labor builder and see how many of them can actually mine. So I'm just going to overwhelm um, the dwarves that are able to mine with mining because I'm not sure how many picks I have. Okay, so I still have a um, decent amount of miners that are only mining, not doing anything else. I think there's about eight of them. And then I just turned on all of the dwarves that are um, that have the su super labor of um, builder that I created. It's a custom profession. Uh, now they're also mining. Or being told to mine. I don't know if there's enough picks for that, but I'm gonna smooth stone this area too. And I'm gonna dig a um, hallway this way to the north. What I'm gonna do with this hallway here is I'm gonna uh, put a bridge in and a lever, so build trap lever. put one here but then I can also because multiple levers can be connected to one bridge so maybe I'll also put a lever up here I'll just dig a it's too big dig a little offshoot like this
Yeah, that works. And I'll put a lever here. And I'll put a bridge here. So I can see whether the bridge is open or not. And then down here... This bridge will be connected to the lever up there that I just um, planned out, and this lever. So this bridge will have two levers, and the um, and this bridge, the bridge here, will have this lever and the lever on the bottom. So I'll have double a double control there. And what I'm going to do with that is uh, start testing down, see if there's another cavern layer. There should be at least two more cavern layers and in an attempt to find uh, magma because we really have to get off of this um, coal driven um, fuel and get to some magma fuel So here's another cave spider here too, which is great. Um, once this area is dug out, and this is just the initial um, dig of it, of the silk farm. I'll um, once this area is dug out, and I, I smooth stone some more, and I see how many spiders I'll get. We'll see if I need to carve a fortification in. The idea of the fortification is that um, I would find an area. that's pretty close to the cave here and my um, silk farm and I would um, just dig it in so there's only one tile that separates them and then carve that tile into a fortification so that way uh, more cave spiders can spawn in there that's more of a theory of mine oh cave spider remains I think the cat might be coming down here So I got two cave spiders, three cave spiders. They should start making webs very soon. But I'm gonna let the game run and I'm gonna make a cup of coffee for myself. Okay, so we were digging this tunnel here and um, breached right here, and this is um, a serious situation because I have a lot of the undead down in the caves, so I have to cancel this dig right here, right away, and I also have to build a wall here. But I'm, okay, let me think about this for a second because I have all of the, I have a lot of the guys building on the outdoor construction right now. What's the fastest way? I'm, so I'm going to build, construct wall, and I need to just wall this area off with the, and then so I'm going to use the just the closest. So it looks like um, it looks like just this diagonal right here. So I'll build construct wall and I'll just put it right there. And hopefully somebody will be pretty quick. Um, squad A, move. I'm just gonna put them right there. building what building is he destroying 
follow. Oh, he just broke the lever. Vabok here, uh, might be one of the villains. I'm writing his name down. Vabok. He's one of the smiths, too. Vabok Lakun. Lakun Meng. Dash. Smith. Okay. He's building the um, wall here, which is great. Oh. Okay. So he built the wall, and um, Lockham here just snuck out. some more in here. Yeah, all this undead is still on the map. So, Locum here is, uh, he's, uh, left for dead, I guess, suppose, because we're not going to be able to save him. down here. I'll find him eventually. That's unfortunate. Build, construct wall. You don't have to do that many walls. Um, just adding a few extra for my uh, preference. So I'm starting to get cave spider um, silk webs down here, which is great. But I do want to make it. I do want to make this area larger, so I'm gonna maybe I'll be a little bit more careful in the probes that I do um, to see because I, it looked like to me that this was not part of the cave system, but then we breached and discovered that it was. So I'll have to. Um, what I'll do is dig uh, just one tile-wide tunnels to discover areas. Just go to the top of this stair here. So unless I build a bridge here, I could build a bridge there, but I don't think I'm going to. Unless I build a bridge there, then I have to treat this area down here as part of the fortress as well. So I have to be pretty careful about keeping this area secure. going to dig a few uh, exploratory mining shafts. And um,
The smith here that uh, destroyed the lever. Babak rise lashes. I'm going to uh, press Z for status and enter for thoughts and preferences. I feel so good. She feels euphoric due to inebriation. She feels loathing, dwelling upon being beaten. Well, you shouldn't have broke the lever. Uh, within the last season, she was afraid reliving experiencing trauma she didn't feel anything after sleeping without a proper room she didn't feel anything after a lack of decent meals for too long she felt lonely after being away from family for too long she felt lonely after being away from friends for too long she was annoyed dwelling upon having drank without using a goblet, cup, or mug. She was interested near a fine furnace. She didn't feel anything after teaching growing. She didn't feel anything at work. She was interested near a fine door. She was interested after learning about engraving. She didn't feel anything upon improving engraving. She didn't feel anything at work. She was embarrassed. Um, dwelling upon sleeping without a proper room. She was interested remembering. She was interested remembering learning about engraving. She was uneasy after seeing a mountain gnome's dead body. She was relieved remembering. Having her punishment reduced. She was restful after getting into an argument. She was annoyed after having a drink without using a pop proper goblet, cup, or mug. She was bored after being able unable to fight for too long. She didn't feel anything at work. Okay, I'm going to press R for relationships. Let's see. She's got a lot of passing acquaintances at the fortress, no friends, no family, and um, Sharul is her deity that she worships. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on her and, um, you know what I'm gonna do is I'll have to, um, I'm going to go to the noble screen. Oh, okay. So the captain, the guard here needs an office. But I'm going to set a dungeon master. The dungeon master is a new part of um, the villain's release. And I believe that they try to figure out if there is anything afoot in the fortress. First Steward Dayton. It says First Steward Data, but there's a, I know there's an in there. It's First Steward Dayton, and I'm just gonna have to build him an office, a, a better quarters, a dining room. But Dayton now is uh, our dungeon master. He's gonna get to the bottom of things. Smooth this out. And I'll dig another room here. Another few rooms, I suppose. The 
Okay, so I just um, marked off some new rooms to be built, or dug out. Some for nobles and some for some of the commoner dwarves. Still have a lot of um, digging and working work going on. What I like about this game is you can tell them to do all this stuff, a lot of work like this, and then um, like I could go leave the house. I can go to the like grocery store or um, take a walk around the block or something, and nothing's going to change in the game except for the work is going to get done. But if like I get an invasion or a strange mood, the game's going to automatically pause. So that's kind of a cool thing that I like about it. That it just kind of auto pauses when something big happens that wants your attention, you know. It doesn't always auto pause. Like if I, um, like when I breached the um, cave down there, it wouldn't have paused. When if we got attacked, or um, when I breached the um, water and started flooding everything. So you should be aware. Of of, uh, you digging, but uh, so I'm just gonna check my probes here. What is this stone? Sphalerite. I'm just gonna look up this uh, sphalerite here. Okay, so I'm over here on the sphalerite dwarf fortress wiki page, and um, it looks like it's gonna make. Uh, it's an ore of zinc here, it's magma safe, and um, I can make brass out of it. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna dig a little bit more here. And hopefully I don't breach. Since I know that I, it seems like this area is kind of safe. So I'm gonna keep these miners um, expanding this area. I think that I discovered enough of the cave where it should be, where I should, um, nothing should be hidden over here. It's possible still, um, so I do need to keep an eye on it, but I'm pretty sure that uh, most of the cave here is discovered. Okay, so a, um, a ghostly miller just came back. I'm going to... He just resurrected. Um, okay, it's a restless haunt. If I click on the ghost here, and then um, Z for status, it's a restless haunt. Um, generally troubling past acquaintances and relatives. The spirit has not been properly memorialized or buried. The ghost is going to cause negative thoughts in its past acquaintances and relatives. It's going to try to haunt them and maybe following them around and everything like that. So I'm going to go to the mason shop and add a task for a um, stone slab and I'm gonna add a workflow for stone slabs and I just want to make um, 
maybe one to four of them. In the Craft Dwarf Workshop, I'm going to add a task to engrave a memorial slab. And the first one on the list here is the ghost. It says, no slabs engraved and to ghost. If I come down, Ingish here, uh, oh man, Ingish died. He's got no slabs engraved and he's not memorialized. And I keep, keep going in this list with the plus and minus keys. Monmas here is, uh, there's no slab engraved, but he is entombed, and entombed is green. So, I'm gonna make a, um, slab here for Atis. So the mason is gonna need to bring a stone to the mason's workshop and make a slab. That slab is gonna be brought to the furniture stockpile where a craft dwarf is going to pick that slab up, bring it to the craft dwarf workshop and engrave it and then bring it back to the furniture stockpile and then I can build it as a memorial. that sound right there it sounds like another ghost yeah okay so I got another ghost now bomb wreck so I'm gonna zoom to zoom to the second ghost here oh he's in the wall okay so Z for status there's also a restless haunt I made another video about ghosts and memorializing the dead, which I will link in a card uh, somewhere at the top of the screen around this section that you can check out. And it's um, I'm just going to go into uh, what the types of haunts are and um, how to memorialize them. I will be memorializing these two ghosts. I'm going to add another job in the Craft Dwarf Workshop here, add a task and down with the plus and minus keys. And now Bomberick, we're gonna memorialize him as well. And a job for a slab at this, this mason as well. So here's a trick that I could do with um, stockpiles. I can press P to make a stockpile, and then S for stone. And right about here, start the corner. Enter. And then X to remove the zone, and just remove half of it. Just like that. And P, X, get rid of this as well. And on the stairs here. So now I have my craft dwarf workshop, mason shop, and the two other ones are surrounded by a stone stockpile, and it, the whole thing counts as one stockpile. So I'm going to press um, W for wheelbarrows. If I set this to zero, no wheelbarrows are going to be used, and potentially any dwarf that has the stone hauling task is going to bring stones here. If I set it to two wheelbarrows, only two dwarves are gonna work this whole stockpile. And that's true for any of the stockpiles. So I'm gonna set this to zero, which means that it's potentially unlimited dwarves are gonna be working in the stockpile since that um, there's no gonna be, there's not gonna be a restriction on the wheelbarrows there. If I press zero there, and I'm gonna go into the settings of this. And I'm just going to forbid clay. I'm just going to have this be other stone. So the settings of this stockpile are any stone. Uh, so the settings of this stockpile are other stone and zero wheelbarrows. So any dwarf with the stone hauling task is going to bring stones to this stockpile. And it's just right around the uh, workshops. 
so that the um, masons or craft dwarfs don't have to go very far to collect a stone when they want one. That should start uh, being processed in the next um, job queue. I just got the notification that um, I go to the announcements here. Locum has been missing for a week. He was the one that uh, ran off into the caves when we breached it. See, I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to flood this area again. Oh, great! So now my Area here is dug out, so I'm gonna make a wood stockpile here. PW. That's gonna be a wooden wooden stockpile there that's gonna take from this once this starts growing in here. But I'm gonna need to reflood this and I need to get rid of all these stones, so I don't know if I made a um Go into the settings of this and just uh, permit economic stones as well. But I don't know if I made a um, dumping zone in this fortress yet because I need to get rid of all these stones out of this room. Do I? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move around the. Um, keyboard selector and I'm reading up here to see if uh, see if these um, stones are blocking the growth of anything. The goblin cap here, the young goblin cap, when that grows up we're going to be able to chop it down for wood. So Same with the um, spore trees here. Yeah, so I'm going to go to designations B for building and item properties and then D to dump items. And then I'm just going to dump all of these, everything on this layer right here. And then designations B, dump. I'll, I'll pick all these stones as well. And designations B, dump. these stones
and then um, I for zones, activity zones, and then in this room right here, I'm just gonna make a um, garbage dump. So D for garbage dump, and now. Okay, great, so some of them are doing it, so I'm gonna zoom to this guy and follow him. Monmon. So they should be they should be dumping everything now. Bringing all the stones that I designated to dump to that zone. And then um, once a majority of the stones are there, I can delete the garbage dump zone and maybe move it somewhere else. The speed at which they move when they're carrying the stone is pretty slow. When you carve the item, when you carve the stone into blocks and they're carrying the block, that's, um, they move a lot faster with that and that's one of the reasons why um, the construction is primarily done with blocks. Still got the ghost here, so um, so build Alt S for a slab. Okay, so I got a couple slabs here. Now I can tab over and press X on the keyboard um, to expand and contrast right here. X, and now it says um, now it tells me that these two slabs, these granites slabs here are also memorialized so these are the two that I want to build so that one and then alt s again right next to it x and the other granite slab so those two ghosts are going to be put to rest when these slabs are built So that box lower left tooth here. Build T for table planning mode. So I just added some furniture into these rooms and doors. Um, I got a bedroom here and three offices. 
or oh, five offices and this one I suppose I'll make a bedroom as well. So I got one, two, three bedrooms, four nobles, and some commoner bedrooms here. And then one, two, three, four, five offices. That can be either offices or dining halls. And um, yeah, you don't have to build the bedrooms. I think I explained that before. You don't have to build the bedrooms as big as these ones. Or um, these are kind of medium sized for the commoners. They like it. I like to give them the cabinet and the um, chests here. It looks like a lot of the chests, if I pause the game here, a lot of the chests are still being made. So I'll go to this mason shop and add another job for um, coffer. Weapon rack, armor. Just repeat these. And then, um, what's the last one? Cabinet. And I'll also do a um, door in this one. So this will kind of be an everything mason shop. So now I have a decent amount of stones up in this um, garbage dump so I can go to designations B for building and item properties and then C to claim. That's the default one. And with box select on I'm just going to claim all these and then shift D to remove the dump. And now these silver nuggets and dolomite and um, all of these items here are going to be activated for jobs if they need to be. So still a lot of work going on. But I am getting the um, spider webs here so I'm going to go to my loom. So I'm going to go to the loom here. Oh, okay. Let me thread into cloth. Yeah, in the loom here, I'm going to add a new task to um, weave silk cloth. Put that on repeat. Alt W, add cloth of any silk, and I'm going to change this to um, maybe something pretty high. Uh, 250. To I don't want to make it too high because the um, a lot of that thread is going to be used to is going to be used in the hospital so they're going to they're going to make a lot of silk cloth but they're also going to need that thread for other things so i don't want all of the cloth to be made into i don't want all the thread to be made into cloth i need some what's going on here i need some for the hospital oh, there's an elk bird here just running around a lot of miasma down here too. You still have the undead walking around on the surface and down here. It looks like they may be chasing these elk birds around. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them here. Great, so Zuth in here is collecting webs, which is which is pretty awesome. I have a multi-level um, cave spider farm now. Yeah, more webs down here. A lot of a lot of uh, cave spiders spawning in here. So I think that once these, once the rest of this mining that I designated is completed, um, and I smooth all this, I'll call this area finished. Um, because it looks like it's going, we're producing a decent amount already. And the next part is to, um, 
I need to find an area where I can dig down even deeper. Okay, so it looks like right here, this is the second cavern layer down. And it looks like this area here is a part of that cavern layer. And if I keep coming up, it took me a little bit to find this. I keep coming up, now this is the first cavern layer. And it looks like this area here is also not part of that cavern layer. So I think that this point right here is a pretty good place where I can dig down to access the next um, area of the map that I want to access. So I'm going to dig a, well, I'm just going to put a little marker right there. And then dig a um, up down stair over here. And dig over here. Dig J downstair. So that should be fine, and then I'll put the bridge in here, in this section, and um, see how far down I can get again, because I need to get uh, off of this charcoal fuel and onto some magma, and the only way that's going to happen is if I dig down enough to get to the magma. Build trap lever. Put it right there. And I'll put a door in as well. tables to the farmer's guild here. And this level of the above ground temple fortress the above ground construction, uh, it's kind of a ziggurat, is um, pretty much complete once this uh, flooring is in here and here. I'm going to start working on the next level. So it's kind of midsummer here of um, the year 303. Just a lot of work going on. In the fortress, uh, we're kind of closed in right now because of the undead army. I think that I'm going to wrap up the episode here. Thank you very much for watching, and subscribe for more videos.